and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Lysandra Swain. We're going to try a new version of Lysandra Swain. We tried one uh, right away whenever the new expansion came out. But we're going to try an updated version that was submitted by a viewer that's been playing this kind of deck a whole lot. And so it's, uh, you know, tuned. Um, we're going to be doing something that's different that I haven't really done with Lysandra decks uh, before. Um, is that like besides like the watcher combo, but we're not playing any frozen thralls in this one That's something that like I would definitely throw frozen thralls in here um, but uh, And especially because you know, like we got we got uh, dark draclorn inquisitor In here, but no frozen thralls um, But it turns out that like sometimes the frozen thrall like sometimes frozen thralls are amazing when you can have them on turn one and you know you can sit there and especially in the slower matchups where they can start the countdown going and then turn five turn six you drop the draclorn and you immediately get the eight eight it's really good but there's also a lot of games where like it's turn five it's turn eight it's turn ten and you draw frozen thrall and it's just a completely dead card because the game's not going to last nearly enough time for the countdown and so it can also cost you games because you just are drawing these in the late game instead of like spells that do anything so we're not going to be playing them we're still going to have our lissandra still have our draclorn um, but the Draclorn is still going to be worth it even without the Frozen Thrall. Because um, using uh, the Frozen Thralls with Lissandra and Draclorn, like, that's going to be really slow. And so we need this to help speed them up. But some, but it's also just a good blocker. Like, it's just a good 5-drop. It's a 4-5. Like, there's nothing wrong with a 4-5. Also, you know, maybe your opponent, like, Equinoxes your Draclorn, and then they don't have their Equinox for their Leviathan later. You know, that's, that's definitely a thing that can happen. So it's still just a, a good card. So we're going to be playing that. Lots of removal, uh, three Blighter Ravine, two Avalanche, three Ice Shards. All of these things are non-combat damage. They do a very good job of leveling up the Swain. Uh, we have Ravenous Flock to pair with all those. We have the Sentry Flock combo as well. Ravenous Flock is going to be an all-star in our deck, and it's going to be a card that like we wish we could play like six of these, honestly, with like how everything else is. We wish we could just have a lot more Ravenous Flocks, but we can only play three. And speaking of three, we got some three sisters being a, a little swift Swiss army knife doing a little bit of everything That's our deck. So like basically we'll have our Leviathan Swain combo that will finish out games And if they are able to stabilize or if that doesn't work, then we'll have the frozen thralls coming down behind them for the eight eights All right, so let's give it a try Lissandra Swain. We're gonna go head on over to rank Brom Vladimir man their their champions are just they're so leveled up. All right, Braum Vladimir seems like our, our natural enemy, right? Like, we, we are a deck that's built around these kind of things. Small amount of damage to a lot of units. Well, their their units love taking small amounts of damage. So this just seems like a, a really bad matchup. All right, so yeah, so we're going to send all of these back. The small amounts of damage don't really help. And Whisper Words is cool, but, you know, we don't really need to keep that in our opener. So we want things that do a, a good amount of damage, like Ravenous Flock could be good. Three Sisters can be nice. We also need Threats. We want, like, Lissandra. We have, like, Scorched Earth in here that can destroy landmarks. Lissandra. No. I'll just pass. If they want to pass also, I'm cool with that. Let's do that. Okay, we'll, we'll have you for next turn. So basically, that Whisper Words only costs one mana, because if I don't play it, we'd have three spell mana, now we have two. Man, and they're passing? Secrets hidden by frost. What is their hand? I am confused. Do they just have all Vladimir's? They just have, must have, like, five, six, what? What is their hand? I guess I guess they, they're playing like Ice Shard and those kind of cards. They have like some one damage cards. They could just have like those and then like Vladimir. I don't know. That's weird, man. Alright, pass. Yeah, there's Vladimir. So if I flock that, it takes four because... It, Turns into one tough. The ice is melting. It's probably still worth doing this. Because it's not re it's not regen right now. They've now had allies survive one point of damage. Or like, you know, one out of five now. 
but yeah, troll chance and all that kind of stuff. Like, there's... This Death Sands definitely doesn't just necessarily kill this. I don't need to use this right now. But I, I like just getting some damage on him. Okay, would not be surprised at all by them having another Vladimir and transfusion this. again. Yeah, that's reasonable. Me getting the troll chain out of their hand last turn, maybe not maybe that would not have been so bad. And this scar grounds just destroys us. <laughs> it really does. Oh man, this is a This is a rough matchup. Yeah, and just all, all of our cards just match up so terribly against Scar Grounds. You must teach me when you have time. I'll think about it. I only dealt four non-combat damage because I can't do any damage to these things. Okay, I hope I never play that matchup ever again with this deck. Or if we do, we gotta have Scorched Earth to kill Scar Grounds. Scar Grounds is unbeatable for us. Okay, much better. No Scar Grounds. Okay, we're going to Mulligan, Mulligan, Mulligan. They are going to be pretty fast. We, we definitely want all of our sweepers with this game. I don't... Like, I'm going to keep Lissandra just because, you know, it's a good three-mana card. But, okay, really, maybe I should just be looking for more of our Ice Shards and Blighted Ravines and Avalanches and all that kind of stuff. So while we did get the Blighted Ravine, which is really good, didn't really... The other three cards didn't really go so well for our Mulligan, but we'll see. Oh, that's a great card. So they'll be able to get a spell from my deck with this Kempunk pickpocket. But the good thing there is, like, a lot of the spells in my deck, I don't mind if they have, right? If they make an avalanche or an ice shard, I, you know, I'm fine with that. Go ahead. But they could make, like, a Scorched Earth that would be very bad or a... Three sisters or a whispered words that would be pretty good for them. I will bury the world in ice. So we can give our opponent more time to play more things. It's basically like they just nopified my avalanche, but I didn't have to spend mana on it. This fall impedes all our plans. 
Where do you stand on cold shots? Frost gathers. What's that you got there? Well, obviously, take that. We don't have to have like Lissandra stay alive for like a, a long time with our deck. It's okay. It's okay to have Lissandra die. They must be doing lots of plundering. Nope, just more sleight of hands. That's pretty fortunate for me. They took the two worst cards to take. I have a lot of very good cards in my hand to take. Obviously, they can't take the Swain. It takes non-champions, but still, like any of these others. Yeah, so sign up. This this wasn't a deck that I built. This is Aroas' deck here. Um, but Aroas kind of talked, you know, I kind of talked about it before. Basically, the Inquisitor is just a solid five drop that, you know, yes, it's it's slow with the the Frozen Thralls, but it's just it's just just also just a solid five drop to kind of have on the curve. When it does help you out, it you know it's it's really nice when it when it does help you out get that eight eight faster. Let's get to it. Shatter. The doors. They're coming high. They're most likely looking to turn on plunder. Seeing them have a lot of plunder cards. Okay, oh, okay. Labs on the calendar. So they're updating the Lab of Legends. How does anybody know how they're updating Lab of Legends? I really like the Lab of Legends. Like is it getting improvements? I hope it's not like means it's gonna be taken away and they're gonna put in some other lab. Maybe it gets more champions though. Like that could be a thing. More champion choices. Maybe eventually they'll have like where you can have all sixty of them. Like, you know, basically or I guess there's fifty eight champions right now. Okay, and yeah, that's what Rai says. They're adding new champions. Yes, yeah, just keep on adding more champions. Yeah, we, we've definitely had other updates like where we've had like 15 to 20 bounce card changes and and it has been a while since we've had one of those so I could definitely see that too like that's you name it, I'll it. Mm, no I guess because I was gonna play ice shard and then ravenous flock and kill his three two so they couldn't block my swain but that's not very good against blighter ravine because if I go if I play ice shard Blight, blighter ravine kills my inquisitor my Inquisitor is close. The don't want mercy. Yeah, I also think that would be pretty cool if the Lab of Legends gets you like random opponents, if they can keep, you know, if they can make more opponents, so that you you don't know that like you're gonna face Sejuani, you know, like the next round, like you know, so it's it's different. So each time you play it, it's it's a different path and everything, so you can fight different. CPUs. If they can triple the size and so like each one is like a one out of three, that would be really nice. And then hopefully, yeah, keep on adding in more champions. Because I, I mean, I think that's that's probably what they should just do with the instead of focusing on making new labs, just keep making, just keep expanding the lab of legends, honestly. Just keep expanding it until you can play every single champion. Check out the goods on this one. Trick shot. No, your place. Merely pause in the bridge again. Because that would be really cool if they can get to it. You know, if they can get that Lab of Legends, like, where you can play all 58 champions, and then also it's, you know, like, 
one out of three or eventually by then you know like one out of five or so like different things on each stage that'd be really cool and, and then yeah keep on adding in more power-ups and items and things like that you know you, there's a lot of ways to expand there too and then finally they could have like a stats page with it too like especially how they they have like on your main page or something maybe they they have like your run percentage like each champion and so people don't just like join because a lot of people like join quit join quit join quit join quit until they see like the exact item they want but maybe they have like a percentage on there so like if you do that you know you you join quit 19 times then you you win that so then you only have a five percent stats page yeah I, I can see how it'd be difficult to have a stats page for all of yeah that would be nuts right that'd be awesome i could i could see how it'd be difficult to have a stats page for like all of your games all the time but a stats page for just just for like the lab that would be sweet because that should be pretty easy to do. Just how many times do you sign up and how many times do you go all the way and win every single one? So, like, what's your win percentage? Yeah, we talked about the versatility, the versatility of the enemies. Yeah, like where... So, it, yeah, that's that was something that I was just talking about where... So, it's not just, like, you always face spiders round one. So, like, round one would be spiders or, like, two to four others. So, you don't have, like, three to three to five options for that first one and then like three to five options for the second one and and so, and so on and you know you can basically you know sp spiders are like shadow wilds you have like a you, you can even max it out where you have like each region so you know there's what eight regions right now each region could have like their own their own thing in the first round each region has their own thing in the second round their own thing in the third round and so on like their own But maybe that's too much. Maybe, maybe I guess each region can't support that much. That could be cool. All right, let's keep going with more Leviathans. Leviathan was good the first time. Play it again the second time. Deal me in. Eyes open. Yeah, it's true. Tavern Keeper is the safer play of not dying immediately. If I go. You know, just play, like, Tavern plus Wayne. Try not to die to uh, removal. Or, you know, like, burn spells. We have already saw Aftershock from them. They could have Mystic Shots and get excited. Alright, yeah, this is probably smart to do this to make sure we don't just die randomly. Yeah, they're probably pretty dead. The answers here somewhere. Hmm, I wonder. Who's gonna close up? All right, that'll do. One to one. Yep. All right, back to PNZ with Ionia. So it's like old Heimer Vi, but throwing in some victors. Uh, let's see, Leviathan gone, and keep the rest. Uh, Sentry gone. We'll just have Lissandra Bjerg. <laughs> Leviathan right back. If you just watched the last game in this game. You would think that we would have a lot of units in our deck and hardly any spells. Hello. Take a stance and hold it. Alright, so that thing is a 4-2. That does kill Lissandra. 4-2 is pretty big. 
don't know if I should just trade. Maybe I should just trade. I don't know. I mean, I'm holding Avalanche, so it's kind of hard just to trade. Right, let's get these eight drops out of my deck. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to keep drawing them. We have the four cards that are the eight drops that Battling Beer can draw. So we got three of the four already in our hand. Alright, not the best trade for me, but not the worst. Really? They got big plans over here. Big plans for the spell mana. They didn't want to play a hex core upgrade. Could be they have like twin disciplines and they have one of their five mana champions. Do we have all three Bjergs in the deck? No, yeah, we only have one babbling Bjerg in this deck right now. Yeah, I think two's, two's enough if you want to play two. Like, that's fine. No, not tough. But now they play Hexcore Upgrade? Why didn't they play Hexcore Upgrade last turn? You can't make up your mind about Victor? About how good it is? Well, it's... It's very slow, and then also even... It's very slow, but very powerful. But also, it is very susceptible to Hush. So it's, it's terrible against Hush, and it's also very slow. But if those two, if you're, you know, if you can work around those two things, you got yourself a really good champion. Ha. Got him. Our, our draws look great on turn 8. Oh my gosh! Y'all, get some hype in the chat. We're going to see some hype boats here. Mervin gifted out 10 subs? That is incredible. That is incredible. Thank you so much, Mervin. So we have... Who are our new subs? We got Broken Arrow. FFFF59. Gamma, Talamari, Bandit, Sotos Leon, Ekateran, Disgruntle Gruntle, King, and Trachetus. Well, what did they get this time? Did they not even get a keyword? Oh, that was the Dragon's Protection. Oh, alright, alright. Thank you, Mervin. We got lots of victories. Ba -ba 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 Do this before they get spell shield. They can still nopify or deny. Hopefully they have neither of those. Eight cards in hand. Probably can't can't have nopify or deny eight cards. Hmm, they did have one. Shocking. Overwhelm? Okay, we're starting to get into trouble territory. Oh, why don't I just stun him? I can actually play this card without Ravenous Flock. Well, that's really, really kind of you, Mervin. Thank you so much. Okay, they were too scared. So our destination is in sight. We got this Frozen Thrall coming down three turns. For Almost here. Yes, of course. Scout? <laughs> Scout Fury Overwhelm? Oh, that thing's scary. All right, we drew Ravenous Flock. That means we can cast Arachnoid's Entry now. <laughs> so we learned that before. We can't cast it. Yes, 
Yep, too much height. Alright, so I guess we'll just have that chill out for two turns. While our Leviathans start doing stuff. Unfortunately, I wish I had one more man and I could play this Wayne also, but I don't. Rude. I'm just flocking that thing. So I, I could flock this thing? Alright, whatever. That's gonna happen. If I... If I flock the Eye of the Dragon, I could, like, attack in with these things. Alright, let's just get rid of... Let's just get some damage on this thing. Now they're both in Avalanche slash Blighted Ravine range. This three sisters could be nice. We could get another Entomb. Because I could have gone Captain Farron, make a Decimate, Decimate them. That only puts them down to five. I think I'm planning on just playing another Leviathan. I think if I play, if I would have played Farron, I should have played Farron before attacking. Alright, so now they don't have Thermogenic Beam for Leviathan available. I guess I could... Actually, you know what? But then my, my Lissandra dies. I, I'm not going to get a Watcher. Oh, wait! The Thrall should happen first, so they should level up from the Thrall. So I'm actually... I'm going to go Swain here instead of Leviathan so that I stun... One of these things. Stun Levi. But they can Thermogenic Beam this thing, though. I was hoping, like, if I play the Ravine first, that they would play something else. We're honestly not that far away from playing the Watcher, right? Because, like, this will be the second 8-drop. Like, if I would have just cast Leviathan this turn, the next turn I could just play, like, Farron and Watcher, right? Like, so we're really not far away from playing Watcher. Especially if I would have played Leviathan right here instead of this. But I just kind of figured we're going to ha probably have to Entomb this turn. But still, if I... So that worked pretty well. They don't get the hex core upgrade, that's nice. Block. Flash Freeze is the safest play. Entomb's my best play, but Flash Freeze is safer. Basically because like if they deny the Entomb, then we're, we're in a lot of trouble. So I guess I'll just go with the, the Flash Freeze. waste this man anyway. Their time has come. Such little lies. Ingenious embrace a new vision of progress. Embrace the calm. All right, so now we're making zero mana Ice Shard. So we'll just play that right now, because of course that deals one damage to their Nexus and stun something. And then I have the ability to play another one for a stun card.
So I could have played Decimate for a stun card also. But I want to play Leviathan. I'd rather have I'd rather play Leviathan this turn. Leviathan does damage that doesn't get denied. Alright, well that's pretty big. Because so I can kill the 4-1. They don't have any blockers left. This is gonna be. This is gonna be really difficult for them to stay alive. And this doesn't seem like a good play. They have to play like a blocker or something. All right, well, I'll just attack with all these. Well, they don't have any blockers. Can they have... Do they have enough <laughs> removal spells to stay alive? And then if they do, I have Leviathan. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Two and one. Yeah, I agree that, that that synergy between the free Ice Shards and then Swain Stun, that is really good. That is pretty cool. All right, we got a very good deck here with Fiora Shen. I will keep this. We're going to keep early removal and Lissandra. And then wait until around turn 11 until we get a Frozen Thrall. That's a good amount of damage. Meh. Not that much damage. <laughs> Spoke too soon, Arois. Alright, now these are all 3 twos. 3 twos hit harder. Take nine damage here, down to seven. But their deck isn't really like about necessarily about uh, doing a whole bunch of damage. It's more about board control. The good thing about this ravine is they can't use sharp sight to save any of their units. All right, because like they're just gonna die. You can't. Can't sharp sight save. Can't like play a barrier to save. Come, my warrior. Show me your worth. I live and die for you alone, my lady. Come, my warrior. Come, come, my warrior. So I attack, they sharp sight, theirs turns into a 6-7, takes four, but then grows eight, and then I flock. So I could I can attack and then sharp and then flock and trade. I just I like this option better than letting them letting them block and have barriers, right? Like even like I know that's not the best trade for me because you know like the, the Draclorn school here, but I'd rather that happen than than like they play uh, Shen, and then, like, give this a barrier, and then it's, like, all annoying trying to get rid of barriers and stuff. I walk this space between worlds. Didn't... Didn't I just say? So if I play this, I can still Ice Shard Flock. What does this need? This needs four or less? Yeah. I'll pass turn. You want to pass turn also? Let's just count... Let's just keep counting them down. They did not want to keep counting down. Okay. So, this doesn't actually kill this thing right now. I guess I could just let this... I could just let this happen. It was kind of like where I had to do stuff first. OK, 
Okay, so no sharp sight over there. And then, of course, with the single combat is non-combat damage, so thus doing the four damage with the single combat that levels up the Swain. I just don't have to be the first one to act. I'm just going to pass. I don't want to play Flock, then they play another single combat or whatever. Right now, they're staring down me, getting an 8-8 eight, eight if they pass the turn. Bright Seal Protector is the card that can certainly Show them what we're made of. do a lot. Man, I can basically kill my own Draclorn to, like, kill them if I want to go, like, Ice Shard to, to kill this, kill Draclorn, Death, you know, stun Scythria, Death Sand, stun the other thing, attack them for 7, do a bunch of damage to them, 8, 9, plus this one, 10, so that would put them down to 4. Alright. We'll just go Death Sand on the Dragon. I... Yeah. Well, that, that's a very good aggressive play for dealing a bunch of damage to them. Okay. It wasn't the best for me staying alive. And so decided not to do that with me, sta for me staying alive. I wanted to save the Ice Shard for save, save the stun. Spiders. All right, well, y'all know what we need to draw. We got eight sweepers. We found one of them. Yeah, I may just mulligan. Because, like, all our stuff's going to be fearsome, so Lissandra doesn't really block fearsome anyway. I could keep Swain. You know what? Let's keep Swain. There we go. Because that's what I was saying. I was like, hopefully we find another area effect thing, another sweeper. And so that then we have, like, Ice Shard and Avalanche. And then that should maybe, like, level up Swain, and then a Swain attack can, like, do a ton of damage to them also. Yeah, the big difference between this list and the list we played before probably is that, yeah, we do not have the uh, one-mana landmark, the Thralls, in this list. All right, so that's five. If I pass, they probably pass, but it's only two mana. Obviously, I could play the ravine, but then they, they just don't play anything into the ravine. Hmm. So I play Ravine 246 that puts Swain at 11. I think I gotta do it. Especially with, with how my hand is with all these other cards that cost 5 and stuff. And we do have a backup Avalanche. Boo. Such little lies. Remember the objectives. For the glory of Noxus. Strike at their foundations. Yeah, this is our second time playing the Elisa Zier deck. I think I think pretty highly of that deck. And wanted to play it again. Uh, 
Yeah, this. Very possible we just die from all Nexus damage. Right, they hit me for. What, four combat damage? And the rest may just be all direct Nexus damage. <laughs> yeah, it's just this is a burn deck for sure. For the Empire. Crazy. Yeah, they they a one a one mana two one hit me, and then the two mana two two spider hit me, and besides that, it's been all direct damage. So I have to play the Blighter Ravine, but the Blighter Ravine only keeps me at four. So if they have a decimate, I lose. Could just go with like mm, Leviathan or something else instead. Yeah, that's game. So usually spiders are really, really weak against these kind of decks with all of this uh, direct, or like with all these like sweepers, but that, that shows you how you can win. Just instead of having spiders, just have nothing but decimates and doom beasts and noxion fervors and imperial demolitionists. So we, we played two bladder ravines to heal our nexus for eight. And we also, also the bladder ravines dealt four damage total to our nexus. And then also we played an Ice Shard that dealt one damage to my Nexus. So I, I dealt five total damage to my Nexus, but I also healed eight. So it was like net gain three. But then, and then they had they had the two one that attacked and, and dealt damage once, and then the two two that dealt damage once. So they dealt four total damage to my Nexus with attacks. And so the other 19 was all just spells. with just two Decimates, three Demolitionists. Um, that's... 14 right there a noxion fervor for 17 and then a doom beast for the other two for 19 so there you go 19 nexus damage um yeah that was one where i, I definitely could have used this kindly tavern keeper to help me out a little bit but yeah that's that's a lot of nexus damage that they had so hard to stop that. But anyway, we'll still take a 3 and 2. We'll always take a 3 and 2. This version definitely felt slower than the other version without having the turn 1 Frozen Thralls, right? It's like we never had like a, a turn 5. Um, you know, you, you just can't have turn 5, 8-8. Eight, eight. So like that that would happen sometimes. But then again, it, it also felt like it was... So so it was slower because you don't, you don't just have like that explosiveness of like the turn 5, 8-8 eight, eight that happens sometimes. But it was still uh, very good. Um, it felt like it had good interaction, still had really good top end and things like that. It, Three Sisters is a card that just keeps on really impressing. This was a card that, like in all of our wins, uh, really did a lot for us with just either using Flash Freeze, Fear of the North, or Entomb. That card has continually looked good. And that was the card that whenever I built the deck before and we played it right away, I didn't have Three Sisters in my deck. And, and that, that's just a card that, that keeps looking good, especially having like that Flash Freeze option. I don't think I really like the Captain Farron in here. It just, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I guess maybe you need it, but we just always had like three Leviathans, so we just didn't need to have Captain Farron also. But maybe I guess there's other games that other people play that don't actually have every single Leviathan <laughs> in their hand all the time. But I think, I think in the five games, I think we drew like 11 or 12 Leviathans <laughs> in the five games total. So it really didn't seem like we also needed Captain Farron. Um, because because basically what i'm saying is like i could see playing i could see just playing like one or two frozen thralls because like like we talked about it's great on turn one but not a card you want to draw later so maybe maybe the thing is just to not play three of these maybe you just play one of them or two of them and you know maybe just play like that like you know you try to have you know try to look for it with your mulligan but you know reduce the chances of drawing it late also so like maybe maybe that's the thing like you can still have the explosion of the eight eight on turn five because that's that's something I was kind of missing. I, I wish we had like the eight eight on turn five. We didn't play against any Targon. That's true. Targon Captain Farron probably pretty necessary. That's true. Farron is the Targon card. That's that's a really good point. All right, but anyway, that's Lissandra Swain. So look looked pretty good. Got a nice winning record. We'll take that. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And uh, let me know what you think of this kind of deck. If you've been playing it yourself, let me know how it's been going for you. Um, 
yeah, let me know what you think the, the card choices or anything like that. I love seeing those comments. All right, that's all I got here, though, for Lissandra Swain. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.